Okay, uh, let's construct another rectangle to represent a, a back wall. Let's place our horizon line. Place a vanishing point. Use that vanishing point to construct orthogonal lines that represent the ceiling and the floor. And now let's put some windows in the room. Uh, first window is going to go on the back wall. It's going to look roughly like this. Okay, so there's our window. Uh, now let's divide this window into four even panes. In order to do that, I need to find the center of this rectangle. So everyone pay attention. This is a really important technique. To find the center of any rectangle, you need to use the zigzag technique. Zigzag works like this. Line up your ruler corner to corner, draw a zig. Then do the same thing for the opposite two corners, draw a zag. And where the zigzag intersects, that's the center of your rectangle. Now, in this case, I'm going to draw a vertical line for the vertical panes. Now we have two separations. And now I'm going to draw a horizontal line to give me my horizontal pane. So now we have a window with one, two, three, four panes that looks like this. This method is used anytime I want to divide something into even increments. So if I want to get more panes, I can keep subdividing. I can keep finding the centers like this. And I'll just keep going. I can keep subdividing, finding the centers, and keep going. So anytime I need even increments, this is the even increment method. Now, this is useful when the window is flat, straight on, but it becomes very useful when the window is on a side-facing wall. So now let's project this window. Let's practice our technique of projection. Let's project this window out, going this way, going this way. And let's place the window over here, like this. You guys estimate the width at this point. Now let's divide this window into four even panes. What's the process? Find the center by using the zigzag. So here's the center of the zigzag. Then we divide our window vertically. And in this case, because this is a side facing wall, the division which was horizontal here is going to be orthogonal. So now we have a window with four even panes. You can see that because the window is getting larger this way, these two panes look larger than the back two panes. So again, the brilliance of perspective is that it calculates the widths for us. So, so long as the setup is accurate, everything else should fall into place. Okay, now let's draw another window. This window, however, needs to be a certain size. Please make this window one and a half inches tall. Here's one, here's a half, like this. The width of it doesn't matter, not particularly important. This window we're going to divide into nine panes, an odd number. So this was this one was four, four panes. This is nine. How do we get nine panes? The first step is to take the height of my window and divide it into three 
even increments. That's why I had you guys measure out one and a half inches because now I want you to measure out an increment at every half inch like this. Easy enough. Let's find our horizontal separations, our horizontal panes. Here's one. The second one is ever so slightly below my horizon line. Yours might be different. One, two, three. Now the question is, how do I get my vertical divisions? That's pretty easy, by doing a zag. So instead of a zigzag, just do one diagonal from corner to corner. Everywhere that diagonal intersects, here and here, that's going to be a vertical division. So now we have a window, this is a little crooked, but a window with nine even panes. So let's do the same thing on this wall. Let's not project in this case. Let's just draw a window that is three inches tall. Let's do it over here. So the front of the window should be exactly three inches. Let's draw the bottom of the window, going back this way, going back this way. You guys decide how wide to make it. Let's stop it here. And then, once again, the reason why I have three inches here is because I want you to take an inch here, an inch here, and divide this into three even increments. <coughs> okay. Now we're going to take those increments and divide our window orthogonally, this way and this way. And now we're going to get the vertical divisions by drawing a diagonal from corner to corner. Either way. So it could be either this way or it could go the other way. You're going to get the same results. Everywhere the diagonal intersects, draw a vertical line and now we have a window with nine even panes. So again, this window is getting larger this way. Notice how this pane appears larger than this one. This one appears larger than this one. We get the exact diminishment of increments when we use perspective. Really, really useful. Okay, so this is the odd method. Anytime I need to divide a window into odd numbers, three, seven, 11, right? Anything that is odd, 9, obviously. Uh, we're going to use this method. So uh, we can draw a window with 5 even panes. I'm sorry, 25 even panes. How do we do it? Well, here we can draw a window that is 5 inches tall, let's say. Like this. Again, you can make it as wide as you want. Measure out five even increments this way. From each one of those increments, draw an orthogonal separation. And now to get the vertical divisions, we draw a diagonal from corner to corner. Let's go the other way in this case. Everywhere the diagonal intersects. Don't get confused by the horizon line, however. We can draw a vertical separation. So now we have a window with 25 even panes. We can use perspective to create a lot of different kinds of grids, lots of different methods for grid creation. Uh, these are the two most important part, uh, most important ones. Uh, remember them. We're going to be using them a lot.